my name's Abeni. I work as a psychological wellbeing practitioner within Diabetes Care For You, which is a psychologically orientated service in Brighton, a diabetes service. So I've just had a talk here at Diabetes UK on um, psychological engagement skills for healthcare professionals um, to use when working with patients with diabetes, especially working with those with eating disorders, because that's a really difficult topic. Um, so we need to make sure that we're asking specific questions and, and the right questions to open up that conversation. Um, so I was talking initially about um, interpersonal skills and how important it, was, it is for us as healthcare professionals to be really empathetic, um, monitoring our use of our body language and um, how we're speaking, things like that. And then we talked a bit about containing the session. So containing being um, keeping the focus of a session, making sure that we're keeping it relevant um, and talking a bit about how to structure the session. So starting with opening up a conversation, saying, up, saying we've got half an hour today, what would you like to discuss? So making the patient feel in control of their session, what they want to talk about. Um, we then went on to talk a bit about um, the art of interruption. So this is when um, we're often going off at a tangent because the patient is feeling anxious or they're deflecting. So we would um, kind of let them know at the beginning of the session that we've only got this amount of time. There may be times where I might have to interrupt you. Um, and also in the middle of a session, if patients are going off on a tangent or if we're overrunning, um, to be able to say, I'm really sorry, but we're just going to have to bring it back to the main focus of today's session. Um, so that's a really important technique when trying to keep the focus. Um, and then we talked a bit about information gathering techniques, so the questions we can ask patients so that we're not kind of um, being confrontational or making the patient feel uncomfortable. Um, and then we talked about shared decision making and goals, so that's how to make sure that the goals that we set with these patients are realistic and that they're involved in their care um, and what they would like to do moving forward. So working with changing behaviour is actually a really difficult process. It's loads of stages in order for us to change. Um, so we need to think about the pros and cons of changing if a patient is feeling really stuck um, so that they have a fully informed kind of information bank of what what change would entail, what the positives of that would be, what the, what the negatives of that would be, and then it's completely over to them whether they want to make those changes. Um, and also then once we've thought about making the changes, how to make them realistic. So as healthcare professionals, we're often trying to lower HbA1c or, um, or kind of looking at numbers. However, the goals that patients really want to work on are ones that involve changing behaviour in a way that is rel relatable to them. Um, and also we want to make sure that the goals are not too easy and not too hard. And when the patient achieves these goals, they get motivation to continue on um, and that sense of empowerment. So we need to make sure the goals we set are, are good goals. I think the main thing is to just be there for the patient and to make sure that you're not um, being confrontational or um, we need to be on the same page as the patient and really um, um, use a lot of empathy when dealing with these patients. So um, just kind of listening, those interpersonal skills are really important. When the patient feels that they trust us and that they're um, comfortable with us, then they're more likely to open up and say that they're, they're suffering from an eating disorder. So I think the main thing is for us to be aware of how we are in a consultation to allow the patient to open up and speak to us about their problems. <laughs>